Hello and welcome back. I am one proud Bavarian and I greet you here with a very important trial. It is, of course, the trial against Jean-Marie Roland. The treacherous enemy of the people, the treacherous enemy of the judge. Of us. Let's take a look. I think we've already looked at this. It's a very happy family, except our father. He's a traitor to the revolution, if you ask me, but don't ask me too loud about it because then we will have to judge him. Um, as it stands, let's just take a look. Oh, the hierarchy. We already did this last episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Roland is down. He fled. And now we can judge his wife. And you know where we are going. Oh, do you know where we are going with that? Compiled by Fabrice Pouli. Oh my god. Three pages? All right. Here we go then. The defendant is Jeanne-Marie Roland, wife of a minister who sympathized with the guillotine Louis Capet. The woman has been accused of instigating trees and corrupting deputies of the convention. She supposedly bribed them with the services of prostitutes who worked for her under the cover of a political salon. Initially, we knew little about the defendant's activity. As a woman, she did not take part in the life of politics reserved for men, instead supposedly hosting a political salon where the person uh, personages of Paris could meet and discuss the current social and political events. Situation. It is true that such meetings indeed took place, but as we have learned from our informants, the circumstances were mor uh, morally controversial. The disputants were entertained by ladies of questionable virtue. Luxurious or not, Madame Roland, in, in essence, ran a brothel. As we gathered information, gossip regarding the defendant's involvement in her husband's career became increasingly credible. We know that the resourceful woman was able to act behind the scenes to win the support of the minister's political opponents. And those who resisted her persuasive talk were tempted by the naked bodies of her girls. Hosting the salon, she was also able to become familiar with the varied views of the prominent convention deputies. As a result, she was able to steer her husband's career even without his knowledge. The above findings have been confirmed by Isabelle Dugard, Dugard? Uh, who worked for the defendant under the alias Giselle. She testified that Madame Roland had many times hosted three men, and while she did not know their names, she unhesitantly referred to them as scum of the deepest dye. I think that we can certainly make a link between these people and the three assassins who attacked Judge Fidel. It is awful to think how many deaths they could have been involved in. Based on our information, we can deduce that the gossip about Madame Roland being one of the pillars of the coup d'etat planned by, Giro by the Girondins is true. She did have an influence on her husband's career, and it is highly probable that he was able to achieve such a prominent position due to her involvement. She cooperated with individuals of questionable reputation, and she must have mastered the art of lying if she was able to keep everything secret for such a long time. Keep everything secret, a secret coup d'etat. Varied views. Giselle. Three men. Tech Judge Fidel. Uh, did not take part. Hosting a political salon. Brothel. Let's take a look if we can unlock all the questions here. There is no trap, actually. Interesting. Interesting. So, let's take a look at this. Exclusion from politics. Mm, running a political salon is the method. Then we have access to the opinions of politicians is the method. Giselle, a uh, witness, clearly. Three cutthroats. Method. Assault on the judge would be an accusation, but we don't really have an accusation. Method, I guess? Yeah, that's what I thought. Coup d'etat. Motive. Masking of intentions is her personal... Not her personality. I mean, this would be her personality, right? Yeah, okay, okay. Still a bit risky here, still a bit risky. Motive or offender's personality, interesting. Brothel, what could the brothel be? The, the method, clearly. There you go. We cannot have any mistakes anymore. Motive or method? Masking of intentions. Assault on the judge. Oh, that's the motive. Got him! Thanks, game, you nerds. Alright, we unlocked them all. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Um, what are the questions that we need to have here? Did the defendant confess to the crime? Was that a counter revolution? <laughs> Did the witness say the name of at least one politician who was bribed by the defendant? Interesting, alright. The defendant may introduce herself. Jean-Marie Roland. The wife of the corrupt and treacherous Minister Roland, Antoine Tinville. You know what? He kind of is growing on me. At the start, he was a bit fervent, but right now, you know what? I agree with him. I have only been asked to give my name. You need not make a show of it, prosecutor. You have been accused of instigating treason and corruption. And I, of course, deny these nonsensical accusations. Of course. Let me just... One minute here. There you go. Of course. Since when do we even talk to traitors? I don't know. You tell me, buddy. Mm. Let's call in Isabelle Dugard. 
Hello, Isabel. Please introduce yourself. My name is Giselle. <clears throat> Pardon me, I drank some coffee there. Your real name. But that is my real name. Oh, all right, me love. My name is Isabelle Dugart. You should address me as Monsieur Le Juge. All right, me love. She's good. <laughs> Tell me, how do you know anything about the corruption of politicians and the defendants of the law? Are you able to give an example of an incident which, in your opinion, appeared to involve the corruption of a politician? If I told you about it, I'd be as well to leave the city. But if you do not tell me, your head will leave your body. Once I were told to go with a young man to this house, Deputy Pierre Vergin uh, Vernio, uh, Vernios, it was, and told to go in and take care of him as if my life depended on it. Is that all? That Vernio treated me with all his might, if I can say that. Left me with plenty of bruises after. On my way out, he says uh, to tell Madame Roland she can consider the matter they discussed dealt with. What a corrupted pig Vernio is. Damn, what a corrupted pig indeed. Gotta go to prison, lady. Did the three men referred by the witness as scum of the deepest dye participate in the planned assassination? There was no assassination, and those three are fruit sellers. Fruit? Yes, there's nothing suspicious about it, and I do not judge people by their appearance. That they did not plan to stab Robespierre and his comrades to death? Absolutely not. Well, if they could not kill a judge of the tribunal, how would they manage the deputies, uh, the deputies of the convention? Ask them about the assassination attempt. Where did they get their fruit? I do not know. You should ask them. We have been unable to find these people. Well, clearly, doing business in Paris is no longer profitable for them. Damn, she's going... She's gonna die, buddy. As a result of your activity, you had access to the views of prominent politicians. That is a quite natural... This is quite natural if you host meetings at which such politicians attend to share their opinions. How much of this knowledge did you obtain by running a brothel? Very little. Ah, but she admits to running a brothel. Damn. Most people prefer to stay silent during those situations, and surely they do not talk about politics. Nevertheless, thanks to your obscene parlor, you were able to obtain information that would be invaluable to a foreign power. I do not know. It could be, but I would have never sold it. Unselfish honesty? If I had, such, uh, if I had sold such information to anyone, Madame de Stael would have immediately invited the aggrieved party, uh, party to come to her salon instead. A selfish hag. Everybody loves France in their own way. I do not betray my friends, and that is why they stand firm beside me. And you will soon end up together kneeling beneath the guillotine. Exactly right. All right. Did you corrupt the convention deputies and... Excuse me for interrupting you, Monsieur Le Juge, but the very thought of influencing politicians in such a despicable, ma uh, despicable manner makes me sick. For innocent girls to be used by monarchists. I would like to remark that the politicians took advantage of the services these girls provided of their own free will. They came to me to talk about politics, who they left with and what for, if you excuse me, is none of my business. Did you receive anything in exchange for arranging, uh, arranging such meetings? If anything at all, only their willingness to return and discuss politics. In other words, it could be said they were regulars to your brothel. It is not a brothel. It is something more complicated, rather a place for the exchange of modern thought. A modern brothel. But you will not deny the fact that in your salon, the politicians enjoyed sensual pleasures. This is a free country, and I am a tolerant person. You have a truly perfected the art. You have truly perfected the art of masking yourself. A political salon that turns out to be nothing more than an ordinary brothel. What is your question? How did you manage to keep this a secret from the people for so long? I hosted a political salon. Sometimes we were joined by beautiful girls who came over to earn a piece of bread. They stayed close to the deputies, but they were never importunate. And you did not mind that? Importunate? Hmm. I understood them. Women have to stick together. And I will not let you call my political salon a brothel. It was more than just an ordinary place. The brightest minds met there to spare us the advertisement. The place will be raised to the ground after you have been guillotined. That's exactly right. Do you know about the attempt on my life? I did hear about it. What a horrible affair. I was attacked by three cutthroats, and one of your charges has testified that she regularly saw three men of doubtful reputation at your establishment. I doubt this is little more than a coincidence and a misunderstanding. And in light of the fact that your husband swore to see to my death, people say different things when they are upset or agitated, it does not mean they will act upon their words. The whole of Paris knows the minister does nothing without his wife's instructions. He will pay for raising a hand against the judge of the tribunal. You heard that? An execution's on the way. And oh baby, an execution is on the way. Now let's answer this fully. She did not confess. Um, it was Deputy Pierre Verniot. 
will suffer for this. I'm sure. Oh, baby, you know it. You know it. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. She tried to kill me. Are you crazy? Her husband is next. Telling you straight up. Your guilt is unquestionable. I sentence you to death. I have nothing to add. We want blood. Off with her head. That's what happens to traitors. Got him. Get dabbed on. We have seven influence. Jesus, we can spend those in intrigue. For sure. Should spend those in intrigue. Let's be real here. But first and foremost, we want to hold a speech, I would assume. At the uh, guillotine. Absolutely. I will always speak to the common folk. Why wouldn't I? So, they are oversensitive over this. So, maybe humility here. Attached is always manipulation, at least most of the time. And then this is aggression, maybe. So, this is strong. This is strong. Maybe some manipulation. Yeah, I'm going to sacrifice. Oh, carefree. It's actually can uh, carelessness then. Interesting. For this convict here, killing was as easy as breathing. That is how guillotining is to us. <laughs> Damn. The masses here are animals. By passing this sentence, we are making our streets safer. I'm not mourning the one being guillotined, but us, his victims. The reign of the previous rulers, whose goal was to bring injustice to the people, ends with their swift deaths. Exactly right. Easy money. We can't really get more reputation anyway, but... Easy money. Are you coming to murder your opponent in person? I am, actually. I am. Off with her head. So ghastly seeing all these faces. Oh, he liked it. He's okay again. Everybody liked it, come on. Let's go. My wife even liked it because we got rid of one of our enemies. Um, I think we want to... This is a good question. I kind of want to bring him up again. I don't want to necessarily anger our father. She would dislike it a little bit. I, it, uh, I would like these two to have something that they both enjoy, but neither of them actually have the same thing that they could enjoy. I mean, screw the father at this point, right? Let's just go with this one. Or do an evening stroll. He hates evening strolls so much. Get destroyed, father. Your bones are wicked. It barely fell. Interesting. Look at that. Look at that. Alright, let's take a look at the map game here. Back to the map. The daily grind. Of destroying our enemies in, in Paris. They got in prison here. Yeah? What happened here? Are they in, in. Wait, what? What are you doing here? What the hell are you? Muscadines. They interfere with our business and that of your enemies by stirring up crowds in the sections, I see. And we do have to kill you. Oh, he's blocked. He can't move out, huh? They are fine. They are friends. This is This is fine. Um, this one is under our control, right? It's aiding us in the construction, if I'm seeing this. Yes, let's go. Um, I mean, we have to fight him here. These are not really actually our enemies. The revolutionaries may sometimes capture somebody. Oh, and Roland is just... Oh, just gone. Suicide. Oh, my goodness. Suicide. After his wife was guillotined. Damn. Well, the way I see it, it wasn't him then. But it's not Robespierre. Who is R? Is it Raymond? No, right? It's not our mentor. He's not a royalist. Maybe he is a royalist? I'm actually not sure. But the way it is, um, we're doing fine. He's trying to instigate some stuff here, the enemy diplomat. But I think that's going to be... What? What? What is this further business anyway? Doing fine on further everything. And we can move out here, I think. Could move over there. Can we just move over the entire map? Jesus. I don't think we need to lower the fervor here. Not at this time, anyway. We could lower it here, I guess. But I would rather, I think, go over here. Oh, he has to go over there. And then we're going to take a look at this. Try to take it over. 
Uh, there's no intrigue currently going on, so that's pretty nice. Once this fight is over, we should get another clue as to who our enemy is. We are day 15. Damn, the, the Act 1 is way longer than I anticipated, I will be honest with you, but I appreciate it. This is a fun game. It seems that the revolution is losing its breath. The situation is slipping out of the convention's control, and they think that we will clean up their mess once they have finished. Dear judges of the Revolutionary Tribunal, every day the enemies of the Republic become greater in number. We're making an effort to weaken the traitors, but if we are to succeed, the Tribunal must be faster and more decisive. No more shall we sentence people to prison, enough with prolonged tri uh, trials. Whenever you approach a straightforward and obvious case, the investigators will shorten the files and, according to the law of 22 Brerial, you judges will be able to sentence the accused immediately after identifying them. No trial will be necessary. Oh, my. What, are we going to decapitate people in droves now? Traitors and enemies of the Republic. But of course. Huh, interesting. Today we only have several minor cases to deal with. Golong's thugs executed the assassination attempt. Pash paid for it. I still do not know who planned it, though. Right. Jesus, that's a lot of influence changes. What's up with that? Why did they take off these influence points from me? Wait a minute, let me check this out. So what do we have? A good relationship, elder son, father, wife, younger son. Position in hierarchy, rise. Uh, we rose up, that's true. The minister fled, but he did also die. So like, this should actually not be here, I swear to god, but that's fine. What else we got here? The aristocrats are going to be very angry soon. Not sure about that one. Other than that, there doesn't appear to be anything interesting going on there. Good relationship with the younger son. Alright, okay. Let's take a look at the hierarchy again. There appears to be... Ah, who's Pash? The mayor of Paris and outspoken supporter of the Girondins. Ah. He achieved his status by slowly climbing the career ladder to the sound of a wildly spinning moral compass. He does not shy away from gambling and engages in any profitable venture presented to him. For a share of profits, he would befriend the devil himself. And then Danton, an attorney himself, he knows the law as well as the tribunal's judges. This fact is considering, uh, considered by many to be the only thing keeping him alive in light of the numerous accusations. We know this dude. I've, I've read about them before, remember that? Wait, what's in our notebook here? Nothing? What do you mean several minor cases? There are no cases. Hello? Where are my, uh, where are my cases though? Am I? Am I blind? Where would I see several smaller cases? Ah, ah. Quick cases. Decide the fate of each defendant with care. You will not be able to take any decision back. Pay attention to who supports the defendants. One Alban Maurice, Oney Alban uh, Maurice, used a stick to a thick stick to beat Blaise Cellier, who was working at a fish stall. According to witnesses, the ruthless blows were punishment for dropping a basket of goods. No information. Killing her? No! Oh, ah. <laughs> well, that wasn't really significant, but they like the aristocrats. So if I move that here, revolutionaries are going to like less. Edouard Abadi, a tavern keeper, has been accused for adding dried con uh, con uh, conifer needles to his sausages. The truth came out when one of his clients, Joseline Monte, noticed that they tasted strange. The enraged innkeeper tugged him off his stool and threw him out of the building. What? So do they... L tugged him off his stool and threw him out of the building. What? Does that mean if I let him go, do aristocrats like that or hate it? They liked it. Okay, that's fine. Natan Popelin. Natan Popelin, who manages prostitutes at places de Federé, uh, brutally beat up a client of one of his employees. After he was detained, he testified that the victim did things he'd not paid for. Uh, probably we could go, right? René Galopin, a municipal uh, official, demanded a bribe from a flower merchant for a good place at the market. When the merchant's daughter came with the money, Galopin locked the door and forced himself on her. Hey, right, goodbye. Have a good one, mate. Uh, we've learned from an informant that the son-in-law of General Evrard Grand, uh, Grand Jean I can't read the name. Grand, Grand, Grand Jean has been appointed to lead the Department of Supply in the École Militaire. Before he met the General's daughter, Boudet used to help his parents at their tavern in the city centre. Hmm. Before he met the General's daughter, Boudet used to... Blah, blah, blah. So this is corruption, right? 
There you go. This this looks good. Hector Pier uh, Pierlo. Hector Pierlo, the owner of a mill, has died after a hearty supper. The victim's wife thinks that her husband was poisoned by the cook, Sebastien Chevito, Chevote. A few days prior to his death, Pierre, uh, Pierre Lowe had prohibited a rendezvous between Chevote and his fiancée. Mm. I'm thinking, right? What do we want here? Maybe we're gonna cut him off. They lose like half of this, but everybody else expands a bit. I think we're gonna do that. Yeah, yeah, this looks fine. This was this was a decent day. I, I like what I did here. Uh, a bit weird to have these cases, but I guess, you know, you gotta grind it out, I guess. Alright, quick case is done. Thank you, even the least powerful deserve justice. I agree, my friend. Didn't cut off too many heads today, but everybody was happy about it. You notice a woman about the same age as your wife standing in front of the court. She, inter uh, she intercepts you the moment she sees you, and for the next few minutes you listen to a story about a husband who sells family heirlooms and drinks away the last France. Of course, their children are starving too. Nothing surprises you until the woman concludes the story by asking you to send her husband to prison. She promises to testify to whatever is necessary as long as he ends up in a cell. Hmm. You know what? I don't want to imprison somebody just like this. That's just ridiculous. She looks you straight in the eyes as if searching for an explanation for your reluctance. As you leave, you can hear quiet sobbing, uh, sobbing behind you. Look, you know, just get him charged by the prosecutor. You'll be fine. What do you have on Pash? Gregory Ramela. Like many others, he was profiting from the Roland's whorehouse. When you cut them off, it was decided that Pash would arrange your assassination. The mayor has strong allies, Danton being one of them, so we cannot simply attack him. We need to target his family. Pardon? Or pardon? I heard rumors that his daughter is in a relationship that many would consider unacceptable. She is involved with another woman and, moreover, the said lady concerts with Muscadines. If you use that knowledge, Pash will begin to make mistakes, terrified that the scandal could be brought to light. His allies will notice and lose faith, uh, faith in him. Will that be enough? Only if you gain his trust first. He must be convinced that you know nothing about his involvement in the attempted assassination. I have a plan, but first we need to do something about the whorehouse taken over by the Rolands. Why is that? Pash loves gambling. Right, so what are we gonna do here? Father, why are you such an idiot? <laughs> I hate him. God damn it. I think we're gonna do this one. Paragraphs and codes. Maybe he's gonna like that a bit. And Bernard's musical interests notwithstanding, he needs to learn some uh, more prospective skills. And law can be an art in its own right, sure. If you don't fall down here, that would be beautiful. Oh, let's go. Easy money. Yeah, okay, this was fine. Let's move on with that. Now let's take a look at the map here. He got killed, which is nice. We found everything. Clément Renard. I don't know who you are, but hello. Uh, he stoked the fervor. Now we have to fight him here. I mean, he will be defeated. Oh. Monarchist scheme. It was Renard all along. An agent cried his superior's surname just before he died. Renard. Once you reveal this information, his people will struggle to stay on the streets of Paris. Is there anything to gain from silence then? Well, there would surely be a commotion in the city. People would start hunting the hidden traitors. Maybe real power would stem not from a battle, but from a silent alliance. Inspection incoming. In three days, officials will come to assess the progress made on the monument. Try your best to impress them. I don't know what that means. Can I beat it? Why can't I beat him up? I can't get him out of here. I can help to beat him up, I guess. I I hate that. The fervor is gonna rise up here, but I can't beat. I can't get rid of him. But if I move you over here, right? Then we increase our influence over the district. They destroy my statue. I can't stop him. And I, I wish I could move him out to like lower it, but I can't. Ah, and this one is going to also... Everybody's just going to have a riot here. Ah, there's Renard. The eminence Greece of uh, Paris, ruling over the city's trade and involved in any and all profitable ventures. He suppresses all dissent, as evidenced by the incident with the stall of Alexis Fidel's father. So it all does come down to that family, huh? A member of the aristocracy retired from public life after the outburst of the revolution. 
No one is quite sure what his motives are, except for multiplying his fortune. Interesting. Um, we are at 17%. But we're gonna get up there to like 20%. This is gonna be fine. Let's take a look at the intrigue. Uh, jean Nicolas Pache. The assassins who tried to take a life must have been paid by someone, and everything, pay everyone, everything points to the mayor of Paris. He's too cautious to let you attack him. You must catch him off guard. Alrighty. Why don't we choose an action? Let Henriot manage the brothel. Pash likes to gamble and flaunt his money. We should expand the brothel's activities to include games of cards and dice. I know how much you like the latter. Commander Henriot will be responsible for security. Pash must feel safe with us. Let David manage the brothel. If you want to lure Pash, you must do so with class. The brother taken from Olon would be the perfect trap, but we still have to make it even more, luxur um, even more luxurious by adding gambling to the range of attractions it offers. Dice, for example. As an artist, da David uh, will surely add a certain extravagance that we will... Let's, let's get back into reading mode. They will tempt even an idler like Pash and he will not expect it. I think we're gonna give it over to David. Sure. Alright, let's take a look if this works out. Meeting with the mayor. And that's it. Day one is uh, taking place. I I hate this. I can't interrupt it. I will save our our diplomat here by fighting the enemy bruiser. But I, I do hate it. I really do hate it. Yeah, do that, please. And off we go. Not the biggest fan of it, but, you know, as long as he doesn't interrupt us building that thing, I feel good about it. Day 16. To Alexis Fidel, I have been told that you wish to have an urgent meeting and talk about the suspects of your attempted assassination. I am more than happy to discuss it. Long live the Republic, Jean Nicolas Pache. Fascinating. What what were the notifications here? We only had two influence points, it's terrible. Well this is as expected. Did we meet another person here? Oh, I think we did somewhere. Am I wrong here? Clément Renard. Ah. We already read that, actually. So, let's take a look at the verdicts, as you do. I think a death penalty is fine here, right? Yeah, we have to... I mean, we have to go with the death penalty at the end of the day. <laughs> we already know. <laughs> Before the court stands Fabrice Cerdan, accused of inciting a riot at the market on Rue Claire. The defendant is an 18-year-old tailor's apprentice who has been working for Morel Goreau, the former personal tailor of Baroness de Ronsard. Due to the situation that arose due to the defendant's actions, Sergeant, uh, Serge, Sergeant Charles Laveau, a member of the National Guard, was beaten. Cerdan himself took part in the riot. He was caught red-handed and, peculiarly, was dressed as a woman. The most incriminating testimony comes from Sylvie Martin, a greengrocer. She had to be forcefully removed from the battered Sergeant, uh, Sergeant Laveau, as did other rioters who, to our surprise, were mostly women. Martin testified that the tailor's apprentice was wandering between the stands, shouting in a dramatic manner that Sergeant Laveau tried to rape him, and that his superiors had refused to carry out justice for the crime. In a gesture of solidarity, Sylvie Martin and the other women present at the, uh, present at the market attacked Sergeant Laveau, who was carrying out a foot patrol, a foot patrol nearby. The soldiers were so surprised by this female assault that they were soon disarmed and beaten. It is said that Cerdan also took an active part in the mal maltreatment of the guard. To be precise, he was seen to kick him in the crotch. It may sound like a trivial matter, but the victims suffered severe injuries. The National Guard, along with a number of deputies, demand capital punishment for the person responsible for inciting the riot. You know what? I'm not just... Look, I'm gonna give him the death penalty because we need to do this here. But I'm telling you straight up, he also deserves it, right? He's gonna get what he deserves. Pervert, running around in women's clothing. I must admit that we do not see such individuals here often. Please introduce yourself. Well, I'm Cerdan. Fa Fabrice Cerdan, Monsieur Le Juge. Are you certain? Yes, Fabrice. Fabrice, an absolutely normal guy. Taylor's apprentice, I mean. The dress was only a joke. The defendant is accused of rousing him up to attack a warrant officer of the National Guard and then taking part in that assault. Does he consider that a joke too? As a prosecutor, I demand... Ah, no, don't do that. The highest something. Assault? I didn't assault anybody, I swear. And who was running th uh, through the market yelling that Sergeant Laveau was a rapist? I wanted to close this. I, I didn't mean... Oh, this is Sergeant Laveau, isn't it? Alright, let's take a look at the questions here. Paul's accusation. Course of events. Oh, that's the method then. What? You dickheads. Assaulting a... 
The merchant's testimony is witnesses. Disguised as a woman is the method. Citing a riot is also a method, I guess. God damn it. Assaulting a guard. Dude. Witnesses? Motive? We're gonna fall out of here. Like, this is gonna go bad real quickly. If I can't figure it out here. Might actually be one of the first judgments where I screw up the questions, huh? I don't know. So this is assaulting a guard. I thought it would be course of events, but apparently not. Maybe method? Did we already try method? Oh, fuck. Um, did the defendant take part in the assault? No. Then again, what kind of an attack was it anyway? The witnesses claim that the accused kicked the ser uh, sergeant in a very delicate part of the body. The same body part with which the sergeant is to uh, have supposedly raped you. Bollocks. I was standing nearby and having a laugh, but I didn't kick him myself. Even if I wanted to, there was no chance to get, uh, to, get to him. The crones were all over him. Look at him. He's laughing. What a twat. Was the dress which the accused is still wearing supposed to help him inside the riot? I really didn't care for any rioting. I just wanted to make fun of Martine and her friends. I was just messing around. Because of your, allow me to quote the accused, messing around, a human being has suffered. How am I to blame for them battering a dishonest soldier? What? Fuck. Ah, oh, we're so screwed. We are so screwed. What was the story behind the costume? Dude, I don't know. Ah, uh, what did Citizen Martin accuse? Oh man, fuck. I actually fucking screwed up. He had a quarrel with some merchants, he wanted to hide from people he had borrowed them. Probably like a bed or something. What did Citizen Martin accuse the defendant of? Dude, if I only knew that. Being a bungler and swindler, I guess? I don't fucking know. Maybe we get lucky here, maybe we don't. Oh, we gotta go against the jury as well. Oh. Well. I fucked up first time. First time I screwed up. But I screwed up badly. I said that citizen Fabrice Serdant to be guillotined. Lead the condemned out. Bravo. Let his head roll. And does it matter what we have to say? You'd better take us into account in the future. Oh, we got lucky here too. Oh my god, we got so lucky. Okay, okay, we got really lucky here. Enemy at the callers. How long is this gonna last? Uh, here. Three days! Ah, oh, man. Alrighty. Well. It's too bad, huh? Maybe we can regain uh, some positivity here if we hold a speech. They are intrigued. They are attached to this. Usually that is like manipulation. They are bullheaded. Maybe aggression. We don't know about the crime. Let's say uh, aggression. Uh, okay, I'm fine with this. Let's let's go with humility here. In the first one. And then the rest is fine. Themis spoke through her mouth. She, sh uh, she calls out justice. And we shall hear her voice. Uh, they really did not like that. Do not listen to them when they say you cannot read. Listen to them when they beg for mercy at the guillotine. That's what they like to hear. You have gained power in France. Now spill the blood of those who oppose the Republic. Right, fair enough. We didn't we didn't get it off today, but we 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 were pretty good. Come on, it was just a stupid joke. A joke. Well, this was the worst trial that I have done in this entire series. It was a total failure on my side, and honestly, he didn't deserve to get fucking beheaded. But. <laughs> We had to do it, boys. Sorry, mate. Shouldn't have uh, worn that dress, huh? It is good to finally meet you in person. I am truly sorry that you had to face such terror. If I only knew the... Bastard behind that despicable crime.
Hmm. Makes you think. Oh, I see how it is. So he's withdrawn about this. Isn't that usually like manipulation? Assassination searching for perpetrators. Could be humility as well. I would argue man uh, manipulation or humility. Only Pash can help. Maybe humility here. Carelessness, okay. That, that's always carelessness. Bullheaded. Can't remember. Was it aggression? Probably. The brother that we are handing over. Oh, let's, all of these are fine. Strong, strong, perfect, perfect, perfect. I'm okay with that. These people prefer to act under the cover of darkness, which you and I also use often to satisfy our mundane needs. The knight should remain in the possession of the right people. <laughs> he I doubt so... the people you are looking for are here in Paris. <laughs> they have either escaped or been killed by those who sent them. You'll be chasing ghosts. Who else, if not the mayor of this magnificent city, could restore peace and order here? You are the only one who can stop the brutality that I have fallen victim to in the streets. As I have told you before, I feel sorry for you. Though let us leave this to the professionals, as we have more important issues to discuss. These people are dead. It has already been decided. Nevertheless, instead of killing some random suspects, I would rather get the right people on the first attempt. I'm intrigued. Madame Roland's facility needs reliable managers. Otherwise, it might be used for wicked purposes, or even turned against us. And if I could share the profits with you... This alliance is something that we both need. Nobody rejects the judge of the tribunal's outstretched hand. I will not accept your refusal. I will Son accept your hand. Because this alliance will make a better life for us and all Parisians. Alright, he's satisfied, which means revolutionaries like us. Reputation is good. Sounds decent. I like it. Hello, everybody. Oh, he hated it, huh? Oh, they all hated it. Sorry, mate. Had to do it. Had to do it. I really only sincerely hope that we will not see the goddamn... Uh, yeah, this is this is the right option, I think. I really hope that we will not see our main district being uh, inflamed and then we, we kind of get screwed. Right, let's have a viola concerto. Father is really terribly angry at us, but that's fine. I barely rose at all, what the fuck? But we did it for him. What does that even mean? Mm-hmm. Alright, what happened here? He was sent away. Very nice. He's still hanging out over here. We took this over, but the fervor is high. Stop doing that. Hey. No! I'm angry. Oh, and I can't move out. Statue has reached another level of development. You can now seize another building. Ah, that's how it works. But you realize we already have, like, a rebellion going on there? Agent was injured. Amazing. <laughs> this twat that's this is a twat right here what are you doing oh no, don't do this lure enemy agents oh, this sucks ass this would rebel the next turn and i can't move him out we can defeat the diplomat but not like that fixes anything for us we need to go in there and, and quench it but we can't do it right now and uh, let's take a look at this so we're at 23 percent so we are ahead of uh, the schedule as you can see here Political Salon, the hideout, or the printing house. What do they do again? The printing house enables actions against the Muscadines and the Revolutionary Patrol. Actions granted by this building will facilitate your work at court. The hideout will help your agents operate more efficiently in Paris. <sighs> Let me take a look. We need to find out what strategy we want to we wanna have here. How do I go back? Go back. No, don't go to Intrigue. What? So this will be done anyway, because this was a success. It is time for Pash to get a taste of victory and good tobacco, all in the newly created gambling den. It is time he felt safe. Before we act, David must confirm the nature of the relationship the mayor's daughter has with Beatrice Caron. If they are having an affair, Pash will be furious and you will help him to make that one mistake we need so much. Espionage. Let Ramel handle it. Uh, he knows every dark alley of the city. 
Uh, Cindy guards. David's uh, presence should not raise any suspicion. Yeah, let's let's go with David. Eighty percent chance. Very nice. This I think this intrigue will go well. I'm more worried about. At least even with the rebellion, we didn't lose our position here. But what do we want to? How do I get the fuck back here? Let's send me to intrigue. I want to go to the map. Press escape. Apparently not. Ah, oh, damn it. All right, what do we buy? Think about it. This will help us in the court. Maybe in the court it's good, necessary. Um, printing house. The Muscadines. I honestly can't even fucking remember who the Muscadines are. How do I... Can I not get out of this unless I seize a building? <sighs> kind of want to get the hideout. I kind of feel like getting the hideout. Now, especially with building 6% every turn, we're not that far away from reaching 40. You know, that, that's literally just like, what, four days? Hmm. And you're going to seize this building. Oh, it takes one turn to do it, huh? All right, that's fine. We will beat him up. We will go back, destroy the uh, uprising. Could lure enemy agents. Not really interested in that, though. District fully upgraded. Oh, right, but he's inciting violence there. All right, in that case, you unlock this one, Gregory Ramel, and then we'll take a look at that. We literally just... Yeah, it's the Muscadines. I hate them so much. I should have gone against them. That is, that is the, the worst case here. But we are doing fine. Don't worry about the map game. You know, we're going to lose territories every now and again. That is just like the game is played, I suppose. But we are doing great. This is fine. We will succeed very, very much in this one, I think. And here's the next case. Back to centers. Let me just, before we end this episode, let me just... Brr. Holy fuck. This is awful. That is awful. Who are you? Richard Meunier. No. Patrice Leconte. That is terrible. I hate it. I really do. Because we're going to have some issues. We're going to... I mean, I told you this before. If I lose this game, then I'm going to call it quits there, right? Like, if they do murder me. Literally, if they do murder me after I... I have to acquit him, I guess. I don't know. I think I should give him a death penalty, though. Because then we have breathing room with these and can go against the common... Or with the common folk afterwards. I think we will see this we will see this through in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you later. Alligator.